Today I'm going to talk about an electronic circuit <coughs> which you see depicted over here. It consists of two inductors and two capacitors and there's a power source. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the current through this capacitor. That's the target. And I'm going to use La the Lagrange equation for this. And we will see that it is quite convenient and easy to do. So in order to do that, we need to first determine our generalized coordinates. And our generalized coordinates are essentially two. There's a Q1 here, and there's a Q2 here. And with those two coordinates, you can essentially calculate everything you need to know. So the, sec the next step is generalized voltages. We need to analyze what the generalized voltages are. And if we look at the schematics here, we only see that there is one generalized voltage and that's the E1T. If there would be resistors in here, we would also have to include those here. But there are no resistors in the system, so we only have one power supply. So in consequence, there's only one generalized voltage. And so the formula of the non-conservative uh, work becomes quite easy. You have E1T dQ1 and so because there are two generalized coordinates there's an E1 which is E1T and E2 equals zero right because dQ1 refers to the first voltage generalized voltage and there's a dQ2 that will refer to the second one but there is no voltage so that will be zero okay so next step is to do the Lagrangian and as we know Lagrangian is always kinetic energy minus potential energy and this is how you can look at it here too we have the energy in the inductance and we have the energy in the capacitors so let's first start with the ones in the inductors in the L's and that's a half times L times Q1 dot squared it's almost like half mv squared, right? You can look at it as kinetic energy, for instance, and then you will see, oh, it's half mv squared. And that's what you do here, too. So there's, it's half L q1 dot squared for the energy in this one, and then a half L q dot 2 squared for that one. Now we look at the capacitor, and we will see that if you look at the, the circuit here, that the energy, which you can compare to potential energy, is equal to Q1 minus Q2 squared over 2C. So you have Q1 minus Q2 because they go in different directions, as you can see here. Therefore, you have to subtract them. And you get 1 over 2C, Q1 minus Q2 squared. The energy in C is 1 over 2C, Q2 squared. Okay? So now you have to subtract those to get the Lagrangian. And you subtract this factor from this factor, T minus V essentially, and you get the Lagrangian. Okay, so now we have the Lagrangian and we can try to solve that equation. And I copied it for convenience, the Lagrangian over here, which was the one that we came up with in the previous slide. We have our generalized voltages, E1 was E1T here and E2 is zero. And we have the Lagrangian equation here that we're gonna uh, explore and use to come up with the equations of motion. Okay, so let's start with Q1. Let's start to differentiate with respect, the Lagrangian with respect to Q1 dot, according to this piece. That will be L times Q1 dot times two divided by two is LQ1 dot here. <coughs> you have to differentiate that towards T, so you get an LQ1 double dot over here. So that's the first term. The second term here is minus the Lagrangian with res differentiation with respect to Q1. So again, you look at the Lagrangian, you differentiate this with respect to Q1, and you get 2 divided by 2 that disappears, divided by C that will remain, and you get Q1 minus Q2 with a minus here, and that minus there gives you a plus here. So you get Q1 minus Q2 over C. And I rewrote that like so. So 
the first equation of motion here now is L Q1 double dot plus 1 over CQ1 minus 1 over CQ2 and that equals to the electromotive force E1 right because E1 was E1T that's over here for the second one you will have a zero here right because E2 equals zero so you get a zero here second generalized parameter gives the same uh, it's the same idea right you start differentiating the Lagrangian with respect to Q2 dot that gives you L Q2 dot and then you have to differentiate it with respect to time so you get an L Q2 double dot same now for differentiation with respect to Q2 the Lagrangian and you get minus Q1 minus Q2 minus Q1 minus Q2 over C plus Q2 over C right and I rewrote that a little bit into L Q2 double dot minus 1 over C Q1 plus 2 over C Q2 equals 0 so these are the two equations of motion that we can solve and you see those are differential equations but they depend on each other right there's a Q2 in this differential equation that also depends on Q1 and vice versa in the Q2 differential equation here the linear second order differential equation there's a dependency between uh, Q1 also here so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a Laplace transform to solve these okay so again for convenience I copied the equations over here those were the two equations of motion we came up with based on this circuit here if you want to go and do a Laplace transform and I might talk about this how we got to this in in a different video but for now we can assume this to be right so if you do a differentiation with respect to time of a variable Q in this case and you Laplace transform this what you will get is you will get s squared times the Laplace transform of qt q depends on t minus s times q at zero minus the differentiation dq dt at zero okay so this you can fill out in these two equations now and you get expressions into s so now it's just an algebraic equation with two unknowns q1 s here and q2s two unknowns two variables you can solve those and i solve those by making a few assumptions i first assumed that q0 equals zero and what that means is that these capacitors at t is zero are not charged there's no charge on these capacitors whatsoever there's no charge in the system i also assumed that q accent zero which is the current at time t is zero dq dt is the current is zero so there's no current running through these inductors for instance yeah so that's zero that's zero I also assume that C equals L equals one so that we can actually see some shape of uh, some function that comes out and we can analyze some of the behavior and as a last one I assume that the electromotive force here is a Dirac Delta function and that's an impulse response in electrotechnical engineering that's very normal to calculate the impulse response on a function and so we do that and it's the most simple function because if you uh, Laplace transform this you will get one so that makes it very easy so this is all assumed we insert the second derivative here into this and this equation and you get two equations one in Q 1s and I used caps here so these are dependent on time and these are dependent on s so we are in the s domain here in the Laplace domain yeah so we have q1s which is this function and q2s is that function right because if you insert this equation this Laplace transform into these two equations you get an algebraic equation into q1 and q2 and you can solve those and that's what I did here so these two are solved here so now we know q2s and our target was to calculate what the current was through this capacitor here so what is I2 in this case and that's dq2 dt right because that's I2 here so we want to calculate dq2 dt which is I2t which is the current through this capacitor here and what we have to do because we know the solution in the s domain so we have to inverse Laplace transform this form here 
this Q2S form. You do an inverse Laplace transform on that, on that, which I'm not going to do here, but I used Mathematica to actually calculate this. You can also do it by hand. It's tedious, but doable. And then I differentiated that towards the time. And if you do that, you get this function out of it. Yeah. And this is actually the current running through this capacitor from T bigger than zero all the way up to infinity. Okay. And you see a picture of that, right? And you see it's very chaotic and it never repeats. The reason it doesn't repeat is because there's no relationship with integers between this t over 2 and this square root of 5 t over 2. There's no repetition there. If you would have had t and 3t here, you would see repetition in your, in your response here, but there is none because it's a square root of 5. <coughs> okay, so that's the first thing you need to notice. It will be fairly chaotic, but if you zoom out and you would go from t is 0 to t is 1000, for instance, you will see that there is repetition there, kind of, right? Not real, but you can see that it's almost the same every time after some time, but not quite because of that square root of 5. So that's the first thing we know. The second thing we know is that the amplitude, if you go to infinity, will always stay the same. It will not go down. There's no dampening in the system. There's no resistor in the system, so it doesn't damp. It doesn't go to zero. So you inject a little bit of energy here, through that Dirac Delta impulse response into the system and that energy will stay in the system forever and ever and ever. There's always an exchange between the capacitors and the inductors here going back and forth, giving the energy back and forth like the potential and the kinetic energy in a mechanical system, right? Exactly the same. Okay, so I think this is a great place to stop. If you like this video, please like and please subscribe and I'll see you in the next.